Hey, hey, here we are in beautiful Monta Vista, Colorado. We're sitting down at the local Assemblies of God Church. We're going to talk with Pastor Raymond about prayer and dig in deep. But first, the intro. And here we are at Monta Vista Assemblies of God Church. I'm so excited to sit down with Pastor Raymond Hurtado. Uh, we're going to be going through stories of prayer and just some exciting stuff. But something I want to let you know and let you guys know is this very video is brought to you uh, in part by Jamie Law of Law Auto in Portland, Oregon. Man, he's been so generous and he decided to go ahead and sponsor this video. And so we wouldn't be here without him. I did a video with him. If you want to check it out, I'm going to link to it up above. And we'll also have links to his uh, car dealership down in the links below. So make sure and check him out. Give him all the love you can. I got two of his cars, so just an awesome guy. Uh, but again, Pastor Raymond, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor. My wife and I are just so excited to sit down with you. And so we want to just welcome you to my guys and the followers that we have and just Really excited to see what God's going to do through this video and what kind of stories you have for us today. So, Amen. So thank you. Amen. And so as you guys know, if you're just following us, we're a prayer channel that takes you with us as we travel to the ends of the earth to witness the power of prayer firsthand. And so that's what we want to do right here, right now, is get to understand why you're a man of prayer. You know, what scriptures do you lean on for prayer? What gets you going for prayer? Why is it that... In your age, you know, you still turn to the Lord for prayer. Amen. I've been praying for um, mostly all my life. But I bet it, I made a covenant with the Lord that I was going to pray um, about 21 years. When I came to the valley, I, I told the Lord I was going to be, be an intercessor prayer every morning, mm -hmm. regardless of uh, rain, shine, snow. Amen. I, I'm here Amen. praying. To the Lord, praise God. So I, I like to call on God. At my I, I learned this from my mother. My mother says, "When you pray, the sicknesses fall off, the chains are broken, uh, your life becomes way better." Uh huh. So I've been praying since my youth. I, I got God. saved when I was nine years old. Wow. I never smoked. I never been to a bar. I never went to a dance hall. Okay. Never got high. Never drank. Yeah. So my life has been surrounded by just prayer Praise and God. going to church. Mm -hmm. That's my life. Wow. And I try to lead my, my boys, my, my daughters, uh, my grandkids to learn how to pray and call on God. Right. Without, without prayer, I think you're a weak Christian. Okay. You need to pray. And that's not a, a once a week or once a month. It's a daily thing in order to overcome yourself and the world mm -hmm. you need to pray i'm in agreement with that so yep 100%. i i talk to god every day and even when i leave the church uh, i go home and read the scripture and pray we, me and some other brothers come over here and, and we pray and then after we pray maybe for an hour an hour and a half we read the scripture mm -hmm. we read a chapter and then we all go our, our own way and then i go visit people who are sick and I, we don't talk. We just read the scriptures again. Okay. So I, uh, I love to pray. That's my uh -huh. life. Praise Prayer. God. <laughs> Didn't we sit down with the right guy today, guys? <laughs> just amazing. And so, you know, we're, we're finding him as a man of God who's praying and done it since his youth. And I just want to encourage you guys, if this is some, something that you've done and you've seen the results, you know, what do you got to lose? And so, you know, go to the Lord right now with whatever petition, whatever request you have, and, and He'll listen. Amen. And He'll listen to us. And so, Pastor, if you wouldn't mind, would you share with us, you know, an amazing prayer story that you have, something that God's done that, that they should know of, something that you just feel that God's burning in your heart that people need to know. And it's something that, you, that, you, that God did because you prayed. You know, something 
that he didn't do just out of his goodness, but you asked God, and how did he respond? Well, when uh, my first wife passed away, my daughters uh, got real hurt. And they decided not to follow Christ, and they went into the world. And that's when I really had to uh, pray, because one of my daughters took off with uh, some young man. For a year, I didn't know what she was. Wow. And I started praying and praying and praying. After a year, she came back. She okay. didn't come back to the church, but she came back that I could see her. Yeah. And I prayed and I prayed and I just had hope that they were going to come back. And they, the more I prayed, it looked like the farther they used to get from God. Hmm. They seemed like they, they fell into a trap of the enemy. They loved the world. But it came a time when uh, they didn't call me for a lot of years. Okay. When I came to the valley, they didn't call me. And about uh, six years ago, they started calling me. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a, uh, like a vision about this. Uh, it was like a, a vision of my, one of my daughters that she called me and she says, uh, Dad, I dreamed this dream about this man who came to my house and and he was, uh, he said, he, you were my father and he was my dad. So I, I said, I bind that in the name of Jesus. And I started praying against that. And when I was in the old church at 677 Madison, mm -hmm. I had a vision in the church that the man had come into the church. And by the sword of the spirit, I cut him in half. Okay. And it broke the bondage, which he was bound by drugs. Wow. And she, uh, she called me and she says, Dad, he says, uh, I, I had this dream and the man came down to the house and he says he was my dad. And, and after that, he, I never seen him again. Hmm. He started breaking down her life and he started coming back to the Lord. Hey, Amen. And right, and right now, they're not fully dedicated to the Lord, mm -hmm. but they're, they're coming to church. They moved to the valley. One of them bought a house here. And they're, and they're attending Praise church, God. they're helping in church, and uh, I'm, I'm still praying for them. Right, yeah. Because the Lord is not finishing with doing a work in their lives. Amen. Plus, I have a, a meeting with my kids once a, Fidel, Adrian, Darla, and Darlene, once a month, and I pray with them, uh -huh. and I encourage them, and that's something that we should do as parents. Yeah. To keep in touch with our children and lift them up in prayer. Because if not, the, the, the enemy comes in and he tries to destroy the walls that you have built That's right. around their lives. Because we, I, I always pray, Lord, put the, the walls of the Holy Spirit, the hedges of the Holy Spirit around their homes. Mm -hmm. And give the angels charge concerning them Amen. in their homes. Yeah. So don't give no place to the enemy to come in like a flood and destroy their lives. Yeah. We're, we're, we're supposed to be, as, we brought them into this world. And I think God has put the responsibility on the parents to put the covering over their lives. That's right. And to bless yeah. them, Lord. That's right. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're perfect, mm -hmm. but the Lord is working in their lives. Right. Like He worked in my life when I was a young man. Yeah. You know, and God is being good. He's changed my life. He made me a different person. I, I can see the, the difference in my life that I'm not, uh, I'm not the same man, right. but I'm a new creature in Jesus Christ. That's what it because says. Because He changed my life. Amen. And 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 and, so, and ever since I've been in the valley, the Lord, I know the Lord sent me here. I've been an intercessor through the valley, through the police department. I pray for the police department. I pray for the God. mayor. I pray for everybody in, in the right. city, because the Lord has put it in my life to pray. And then I pray for Obama, our president. I pray for mm -hmm. the Congress. Mm -hmm. I pray for our country. Yeah. I even pray for the farmers so they can bring in their harvest. That's right. So, That's so a, we, yeah. we would have all these people coming into the valley, all these uh, migrant workers. Uh -huh. And I pray Lift especially for this house that the Lord has given us. This right. And something you were saying, I just had this visual. You were talking about a hedge that parents put around their family. And that I just pictured the enemy sweeping and checking for little cracks and little spots. Amen. and. As you said that you know you daily and constantly and the fact that you get together once a month with your kids to pray that is just phenomenal i've never heard that that's amazing i know that parents pray but just just that act of you know you're actually being intentional and going out and praying for them is just phenomenal and so when the enemy checks 
it's like we almost get to laugh because it's like, haha, man, we've already covered that spot. We've already covered that hole. You're not getting in, and, and that's through prayer. And, you know, I think intercession is something that we haven't covered much on this channel yet, and I'm just so thankful to sit down with you because that intercessory prayer, you know, he's talking about praying for the migrant workers and Amen. the cops and the mayor and President Obama and President Trump and just praying for all the different presidents and the Congress folks and that intercessory prayer is something that that we do need and that we do believe in as Christians and it changes things That's right. and I think people like you these giants in the faith are pillars that are holding up uh, just holding up this nation and so as we continue this interview something I want to get into a little bit is where is your church going in the future what are you guys praying for what's something that that you think you're going to need God to back you up or it's not going to work. You know, we hear of Moses saying he, he wants to go up, but if God isn't there, if God's not with him, it's not even worth going for. That's right. And so what's something that you're praying for your congregation? Well, I'm praying right for a revival. Amen. I'm praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not only in my children, but in the congregation, and not only in the congregation, but in the city. Okay. And not only in the city, but the whole valley. Mm -hmm. For all the churches to have this revival. Because without that, the churches are going to fall. That's it. We need a revival. We need to get together, not to talk mm -hmm. like we usually do, but to pray and to call on God. If we don't call on God, our churches are going to die spiritually. There's not going to be nothing there. We need to call on God. We need to get together and just call on God and pray. Mm -hmm as Christians Amen. And, and go back to the old, uh, to the old uh, uh, basics of, of calling on God and, and, yeah. and, and, and speaking in tongues. Yeah. I, I'm a great believer that salvation, the proof of you being saved is speaking in tongues. Uh -huh. It's the evidence of you having the Spirit. Sometimes I come in here and I groan. Right. I, don't, I can't even talk That's because sweet. my inner body, my inner man, wants to come out and he wants to call and go. Amen. There's something that we have to do. We need to call on God. And if we don't, we're going to fall on our faces. God has got to be in the midst of our churches. God has got to be in the Amen. midst of our homes. God has got to be there or else we're going to fall. Yeah. We're going to fall. Yeah. We got to call on God. Because without prayer, with people who don't pray, I think they're just barely hanging on by the thread. Right. That's a that's a good scenario. Yeah. They're like hanging that. on and, and if they don't pray, they're gonna fall spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because I know the world's changing, it's changing in a drastic thing that it, it, the devil's working. And he's yeah. working at not, not not against the world but against the Christians. Because I think the Christians do not operate on the system of the world. The true Christians, the, we operate on the system of God. That's right. And when, right. And when the things look bad and, and, and the things don't look good, mm -hmm. we don't look to the we don't look to president. Uh, uh, we don't look to the president. Mm -hmm. We look to God. Hey Amen. We sure do. Because yeah. we we operate on the system of God. When they say. There's no jobs when they say everything looks bad in the homes. When they say the kids are in drugs, the kids are out of control. We don't look at all that. Mm -hmm. We look at God. That's right. Because the promises of God are greater. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in yeah. you <laughs> yeah, than he is in the world. Yeah, it does. So we can be more than overcomers because we trust on God. We trust on Jesus. Yep. Jesus says, come unto me all who are labored and heavy, and heavy laden that I will give you rest. And the rest that he gives is not for heaven, it's for here. Right. If you, if you operate on the system of, of Jesus, on the system of God, you don't worry about all the, the other things that are going on in our world today. Yeah. The, 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 the waves of heat and the melting of the ice and, and people look at all that and they start worrying the world's coming to an end. The world's not going to end. Mm. The world's not going to end. Maybe the people are going to disappear but we right. trust in God we go on our knees and if you guys are listening I just encourage you to lean in a bit more because what Pastor Raymond's talking about here is life and death and this stuff is is powerful this is a divine appointment if you're here it's not by chance it's because God wants you to hear this message and I'm just so encouraged by just the fact that a pastor has to say that we need God back in the churches should wake us up a little bit because uh, 
that should be obvious, but as mm -hmm. you're saying, Pastor, it's not, and we need to, uh, you know, you're talking about getting together and not talking anymore, but calling on the Lord, getting together for these events and actually calling to the Lord in prayer, and that's exactly where we want to be. We want to be with you. We want to be in the midst of that. We want to be in the trenches praying, so every time we post a video like this, we ask for prayer requests down below so that we can pray with people, Amen. and so... We're going to move in just a little bit more into prayer time because I feel it not only is it the next thing on the list, but I feel just the, the mood and the atmosphere is moving into prayer. And so I want to cover that. I want to cover some of those prayer requests you have. I came with two of my own. I'm just going to read them and then we'll just break into prayer for okay. just a couple minutes. Okay. Uh, maybe after the video we'll stay for even more prayer, but we'll keep it short for you guys. But uh, Michael over in Kenya, he posted a prayer request. He's saying, you know, pray for marriages. I'm imagining you also want us to pray for your marriage. So Michael, we'll pray for your marriage. And then uh, Beatrice Guterres, you're asking that the chains and the bonds of drug addiction on the youth will be broken. And, you know, we come in agreement with that. Amen. You were already touching on that, and you saw a vision of that and just the bonds of, of the demon holding on tight through drugs and opioids and alcohol and addiction. Right. So we're going to cover that as well. But, you know, Pastor, if you don't mind, if you could start us off in prayer and then I'll, I'll kind of close us here in a minute. And okay. uh, those are just a couple of things that, that I want to cover, but whatever... God's put on your heart to pray well, for. We've got two members in our church, uh, Abe Heredia. Okay. He's in the hospital right now. He's getting blood cell infusions. He's got leukemia. Okay. And he's going to have to stay there uh, like 100 days. Wow. In, in the hospital. And then we got another sister in our church who's got uh, cancer. He had, she had cancer. She claims God healed her. Okay. But I, I like to keep her in prayer. Her name That's is Blanca. Right. Blanca. Okay. So. Blanca, we're lifting you up as well. So. All right, yeah, take it away. You want to pray? Yes, sir. Yeah. Father God, we come before thy presence. We yes. bring all these petitions, Heavenly Father, before you. We know, hallelujah, that you got the answer. Even before we ask you, we're answering, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. For the, you're the author, hallelujah, of, of, yes. of our Christian walk, Heavenly Father. You're still working on each one of us, Lord. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus for that man in Kenya, Heavenly Father, hallelujah, for you to touch his marriage, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. Thank you. For that other lady, hallelujah, she said, hallelujah, we ask you, hallelujah, to break the bondage of drugs. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And opium, hallelujah, we ask done, you, Lord, Father. to. Hallelujah. For Abe, hallelujah, who's in the hospital, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with him, hallelujah, yes, and direct yes. those doctors, hallelujah, who are doing the That's work right. on his body. For Blanca, Heavenly Father, for she claims her healing, and I stand on the word, hallelujah, Keep it bay, that Father. she has healed, hallelujah, right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, hallelujah, to be with them, hallelujah, for you are God, hallelujah. You are God, and you always answer our prayers, Lord. Yes, Even God. before we call upon you, you're answering, Heavenly Father, for you are God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Father, we just praise you. We love you. Yes, we Lord. worship you. Yes, we honor you, God. God. You're thank the most you, high. And we just Hallelujah. thank you, Lord, for this church. Yes, Lord. We bless the Hallelujah. work that's going to be done here, that's yes, continuing Jesus. to be done Hallelujah. here, Father. Bless the carpet, the chairs, yes, the walls, Lord. the doors. Hallelujah. When people Jesus. come in, Father, let them experience yes, Jesus God. Christ. Hallelujah. Father, let the Holy Spirit yes, reign Lord. here. Hallelujah. God, as we extend on into Monta Vista Jesus. and the surrounding community, yes, into Lord. the harvest, yes, God, into the workers that are coming and the travelers and people who come through Monta Vista. Vista Hallelujah. just feel oh, just a jolt Hallelujah. because the, the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. has has yes, dominion Lord. here, Hallelujah. Father God. Yes, so we Lord. just praise you for that. Praise yes, you for the Lord work here. Jesus. God, Hallelujah. we lift up Pastor Raymond, all of Hallelujah. his family and his Jesus. congregation. Father, we Hallelujah. just bless them in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much Hallelujah. for everything you're Hallelujah. doing, God. We love you. We praise Hallelujah. you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. So I just want to, you know, go into a little bit of encouragement because I've already taken away so much from, from this. And so, guys, if you're, if you're with us, you know, I just want to encourage you that what Pastor Raymond is telling us today, what I keep hearing of years of persistent prayer and diving into the Word and prayer and Word and prayer, I don't think it's one or the other. It's a culmination of the two is has brought this man to a place of walking with the Lord. And as we get closer, as we read in the book of Genesis, of God would walk with them in the garden, and He would say, the cool of the day, and God would just be with them. I think examples like this is of a man who's, 
who's getting closer. When I understand your story, I, I see a man who's getting closer to that moment of Adam and Eve walking in the garden with God in the cool of the day. And just, I just feel the, the trust and the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. And guys, that's possible in an instant like that. This, the moment that you step in and put your trust in Jesus Christ, He's ready to give you that calmness. You said a Amen. peace that surpasses all understanding. And guys, just press into Him, press into the Word. And as always, we encourage you to dive into prayer. I think that's where it's going to start. You know, it's always going to start in prayer because as you get to know God, as you get to understand Him, you're building a relationship. So you're starting in prayer and then you read some scripture and you bounce that back in prayer and you, you kind of get closer and closer to what He has and what, what I'm attaining to. But, you know, do you have any words of encouragement for these guys as we continue well, along? I, I, I just encourage everybody to call on the Lord and to stay close to God. We don't have, we don't have an, any other hope. That's we right. can't depend on our government. We can't depend on, on any other source, but we have to depend on God. If God is not in your midst, if God is not in your home, you have chaos in your home. Amen. You have to stay with God and call on God because He is the one who's going to fix all the problems. We can try different things in, in ourselves and try to fix everything that's going on. But we will never be able until God, you start calling on God and let him do the work in your life. Because he's, he's, he said, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor, would you tell these guys, if they're in Monta Vista, if you stumble through this town on a Sunday morning, on a, what are your hours? Where, where are you located at? You know, how could they reach out to you? All the above. They could uh, come to our church. We start at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then uh, in the evening, we, we have in the morning Sunday school class. And then at 11, we start our worship service and our, and our preaching. And then, we, and then and at night, we have come at 5. Okay, so you have another service at yeah. 5? Okay, great. And then you have an English and Spanish service? It's a bilingual church. Mm -hmm. So we go from Spanish to English. We don't have an interpreter. We just okay. do it ourselves. Amen. Uh, empezamos a las 10. Uh, uh, acabamos uh, el servicio de alabanza de estudio y luego empezamos también el, el servicio de alabanza a las uh, 11 y, te, y tenemos servicio también en la noche a las 5. Gracias. Gloria a Dios. <laughs> Amen. So guys, if you're enjoying this content, you know, what helps us out is a little hitting the like button, subscribing. You know, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but any kind of support you can throw our way, watching the video, sharing them around. We'll take all of it that we can get. But guys, I just want to, you know, offer you the, again, to check out the comments section. You know, put your prayer request down below. Check out what we got in the description. I'm going to make sure that if you want to find them, you'll see it in the description. It'll be the first thing listed, their hours, their location, the Facebook account and everything. So I really hope you guys will just re-watch this and then re-watch it again because some of the stuff that Pastor Raymond talked about, and I wish you could be right here, I hope that the video, you know, captures some of the presence of the Holy Spirit and the faith that this, this man, this giant in the faith has and that it's just coming off him. I think it's like, I could smell it or something. Guys, what an awesome, awesome opportunity to sit down with you, Pastor Raymond. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Guys, and we will see you in the next video.